This is the second of two narrated PowerPoints that deal with telescopes. This one deals with the full-blown resolution formula, the one that you use when you can't use the simple one, 5 divided by d. There are two formulas for the angular resolution of a telescope. I'm going to circle them here in green for you. In both cases, the angular resolution is in seconds of arc or arc seconds. The simpler version, which I'm underlining, the number 5 divided by the aperture or diameter in inches, can only be used if you're using a telescope operating at visible wavelengths, a so-called optical telescope. For a radio telescope or somewhere else in the electromagnetic spectrum, we have to use a slightly more complicated formula, 0.25, which is a unit conversion, times the wavelength in micrometers divided by the diameter in meters. And the relationship between micrometers and meters is given here. But in this formula, the 0.25 is already doing a whole bunch of unit conversions for you. So as long as the wavelength is given in micrometers and the diameter is given in meters, you will not have to do any unit conversions. But are you always going to be so lucky? I think not. So here's a typical problem. A one kilometer wide radio telescope array observes at a wavelength of 10 centimeters. What is its angular resolution? Well, since we're given that it is a radio telescope and it observes at radio wavelengths, we cannot use the simple five over D in inches. Your other clue should be here that it's a one kilometer wide. And remember that the 5 over d, d has to be in inches. So this should give you a clue that perhaps we can't use that formula. So we're going to be using the full-blown resolution formula right here. So let's look and see what we've been given. We've been given the diameter. The diameter is 1 kilometer. It has to be given to you in meters. Well, that's pretty simple because a kilometer is just 1,000 meters. So we can consider that a check. We know how to do that. The wavelength is given as 10 centimeters, but we have to have the wavelength in micrometers. So we're going to have to do a little bit of a unit conversion before we get to the answer. So here's the formula again. Again, we have the aperture and we have the wavelength. The aperture or diameter, remember that we're going to convert that to meters. So this is going to be 1,000 meters over here. And in the top, the wavelength is going to have to be converted from centimeters into micrometers. Here is the relationship between micrometers and meters. And remember that there are 100, 100 centimeters in a meter. So let's convert. We have 10 centimeters times 1 meter is 100 centimeters, and 1 micrometer is 10 to the minus 6 meters. Now let's make sure that I've set this up correctly for you. Well, centimeters cancel, meters cancel. So the only unit that you're left with is micrometers, which is exactly what we want. So now I can go ahead and plug it in. Now remember that the units are going to look a little wonky in this because there's already a unit conversion built into here. All we have to do is make sure the wavelength is in micrometers and the diameter is in meters and everything will turn out okay. So we've already converted the wavelength into micrometers. That's this number, which we're going to put in here in the numerator. And we said that the Diameter or aperture is one kilometer, but one kilometer is simply a thousand meters. We put that here, we multiply that out, and we end up with an angular resolution of 25 seconds of arc. That's actually very large for a resolution. Radio telescopes don't have nearly as good resolution as optical telescopes. That's why they have to be so big to try to get a decent resolution.